What's up guys, welcome back to Next Gaming where we cover everything newsworthy that pertains to games. Starting off today's show, Steel Rising is out if you guys want some steampunk Dark Souls-esque gameplay. Gives me Bloodborne vibes with a lighter tone. So, can't wait to check that one out. We also got a pretty kick-ass deal on Humble Bundle, 18 games for the price of $16. The 2K Mega Hits, including Duke Nukem Forever Collection, The Mafia The Definitive Edition, XCOM The Complete Collection, Sid Meier's Civ 6, also the Bioshock Collection, and Borderlands 3 The Super Deluxe Edition, all for the price of $16. There's a couple other games that I didn't name, but you can check out the list below. I think it's uh, it's a bargain. You gotta go for it. I already picked mine up, and it supports charity, so what's the problem with that? Next, we got CD Projekt Red confirming the Phantom Liberty expansion is only coming to the next-gen consoles and PC players, with the Xbox Series X users also being reimbursed for all the problems. I'm curious if the PS5 users are going to get a discount or if this is just a Microsoft deal or something. I'm, I'm unsure, but that is kind of disappointing, but obviously the, the last gen consoles cannot really handle too much. So if you're going to expand on what you can't already do, it makes sense it's not coming. Here we got a new God of War Ragnarok skin PlayStation 5 and Honestly, by having a PlayStation 5 myself, this just looks kind of ridiculous. I mean, yeah, it looks it looks pretty sick, don't get me wrong, but there's no way I could fit it. I feel like a lot of people couldn't fit it in their, uh, their media center, so, you know, mine fit with just three to four inches to work with, you know, so I can only imagine this is this is hell to try and put in a, in a media center, you know, but, you know, if you have it standing up, that it might work that way. I got my Xbox Series X standing up because it just, it couldn't, it couldn't fit anywhere so maybe if you do that but I mean it does look amazing it, so if you're interested in that go and check that out that's uh, that's up for pre-order I imagine with the Xbox rolling out a new system update recently that you guys can go download right now it's at uh, just about one gigabyte doesn't take too long Microsoft has announced that they have started testing on a new UI that will arrive for everyone in 2023 I can't wait to see if it's an upgrade honestly I've never had a big deal with the Xbox One or Xbox Series X user interface, but I know a lot of you out there love the 360 UI the best, so we'll just have to wait and see till we get a look at it and judge it. But you know, I've never had an issue with it. It's it's usually pretty sleek, but if they you know change anything drastically, that would be uh, pretty interesting. Well, guys, it's official. Crystal Dynamics is now in control of the Tomb Raider franchise, among other titles in their lineup, without the influence of Square Enix. Honestly, we've been blaming Square, but what if it is Crystal Dynamics having problems with these titles? There'll be no excuse if another Tomb Raider comes out in the same vein as the last. That's just, that was the only one I was not into, but with saying that, Square Enix has laid out that their plan will not result in more profits immediately, but as they grow their Japanese studio games. They also detailed how the industry is changing and that they are interested, as in the likes of Microsoft, in for joint collaborations. Can't wait to see how it goes down for Square and Crystal Dynamics just to see what really happens after this deal. And for our last news story, with EA celebrating 20 years of Battlefield, they have also stated they are all in on Battlefield, having multiple studios collaborating to make a connected Battlefield universe. With DICE, Ripple Effect Studio, and a new Seattle based studio, Ridgeline Games, which will be working on a gripping narrative campaign story for Battlefield. Having DICE still centered on massive multiplayers, we also have Ripple Effect Studio working on an entirely new Battlefield experience. That's interesting. This is all interesting, but you know, they have to know that the fans are not proud or excited for another Battlefield title at this point. You know, it's it's less than a year from the last, uh, you know, debacle of, of what Battlefield 2042 was. However, I am interested in a new campaign. We haven't had a, a Battlefield experience in a campaign form since, what, three or four? That's, uh, that's, it's been a while. It's been a while. I was not too, uh, too happy with Battlefield 1 or Battlefield 5's campaign. They were okay, you know, but they weren't, they weren't fleshed out in the same vein as, as three and four to me personally. I know a lot of people probably don't even like three or 4's campaign. They were a little mixed on the review sides, but, you know, I, I miss it. I miss those, uh, those experiences of, of being hunking, hunkered down and, a, you know, having a, a sniper try and take you out is, and it's all scripted, you know, so it just feels really movie-like, really, 
top notch compared to the bugginess of what a multiplayer can be you know even though the multiplayer can also be much more fleshed out than what a campaign is is capable of but you know my thoughts anyway guys that's it for today it's been next gaming don't forget to like comment and subscribe to join the wolf pack peace